I'm introducing one of my best friends, one of my brother, Amen. one of my brothers, Brandon J. Gray. He's a, he's a native of Bloomington, Delaware, a uh, graduate of Howard High School, and a soon-to-be graduate of Delaware State Amen. University. Delaware State! Yes. All right. All right. He is a member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Well, well, well. well. And today, he's going to give you all a great message. So I hope you all can enjoy. So put your hands together for Brandon Gray. Yeah. And now we will have the ministry of songs by our mighty millennials. Let's give them a hand as they come. The next voice you will hear is that
If you're not, say, hold on. Mark chapter 4. Verse 35 and 40. When you're there, say amen. amen. If you need a little bit more time, say wait on me. There they go, Bishop. We there, we there, we there, we there. Okay. <laughs> that day when the evening came, he said to his disciples, you there, where? Okay. <laughs> Let us go over to the other side. <laughs> Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. And there were also boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. And the disciples woke him and said to him, Master or teacher, don't you care if we drown? So he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? This is God's holy word and it's blessed already. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this wonderful occasion. We thank you, God, that you continue to look beyond our faults and that you always tend to our needs. So God, as we come to the, in this sacred space to give you glory, honor, and praise, we also come seeking a word, God. Lord, you call me in this hour, in this moment, to be used as a vessel. And so, God, I pray that you would touch me, God, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Lord, that you would kill a spirit of performance, a spirit of imitation, and a spirit of flattery. God, I pray right now that the light that shines on me does not shine lighter than the light that shines in me. God, I pray that you would touch my mouth, Lord. That only what comes out of it is the word that you put in me, God. I pray, Lord, that today you will break yokes. I pray, Lord, that demons will flee. I pray, Lord, that visions will become realities. God, I pray that addictions will be broken. I pray that broken hearts will be mended. And I pray, Lord, that you would reveal, God, to every unbeliever that Jesus Christ is alive and well. Yes. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise in advance, Lord, for what you're able to do and what you will do. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let everybody say amen. 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 I want to this morning, New Galilee, preach using as a subject, he won't let you drown. Oh, amen. Turn it to your neighbor. Neighbor. He won't let you drive. Turn and tell another neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor, I promise you, God won't let you drive. If you believe that, won't you give God some praise? Oh, yeah. 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 My dear friends, this very week, this very month, or even the first seven months of this long year, for some of us in the room this morning has been an extremely difficult and trying time in our lives, amen. It's been a time filled with great challenge. It's been a time filled with unspeakable chaos. And it's been a time filled with terrible controversy. Nothing, New Galilee, for some of us here today has been working in our favor. We can't find a way of escape. When we take two steps forward, it feels like we get knocked 10 steps back. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Nothing again seems to be working right. in our favor. Some of us here today feel like Job because we feel like the hedge of protection has been lifted from our lives and the enemy has been given free range and permission to attack every single area of our lives. Nothing seems to be going well. 
So as a consequence, many of us came to church this morning not to get away from our everyday lives or just to get out of the house or from on, people who adore on, us. We didn't even come to church today to indulge in church politics or to show off our outfits. But you came to church this morning because it feels like you've been drowning in some stuff and nobody has thrown you a life jacket. Nobody has been able to pull you out of your depression. They haven't been able to pull you out of that toxic and unhealthy relationship. They haven't been able to pull you out of the clutch of unemployment. They haven't been able to pull you out of a school system that's designed to block you from your future. And you are now in a place where you are unfortunately soaked in sorrow because you've been screaming for someone to help you get out of the mess you're facing. But the tide of your life just keeps getting worse. And so in the words of the great poet, Mr. Langston Hughes, life for you has not been a crystal stair, but it's had tacks in and splinters in Boards turn up in places with no carpet on the floor bare. You have been drowning, and so once again, you came into God's house today to get in his face and say, God, I need you now more than I ever needed you before in my life to stop this storm that has been rocking me in every direction to the point where I'm about to lose my mind. I need you, God, to get me out of this storm where the winds have been blowing me into a position where I now question whether or not you can bring me out of this. I need you, God, to get me out of the storm where my bills have piled up over my head and my children are feverishly suffering from food insecurities. I need you, God, to get me out of this storm where it seems like I'm the only one in my family and out of my group of friends that keeps getting attacked and experiencing depression. God, I need you to get me out of this storm because my problems in my situation have been drowning me and I came to church not to be entertained. I came to church not to be aroused and I came to church not to get in anybody else's business but I came to church this morning to get in God's face and hear his voice confirm to me that he is not going to let me drown in the situation that has been keeping me bound. Somebody turn and tell your neighbor he's not going to let you drown. He's not going to let you drown. You, you, you would be amazed, you would be amazed, church, to know that according to a statistic provided by In Drowning Now, that from the year 2009 to 2018, there have been 24,190 drownings in the United States of America. And out of that shocking and arousing number, 21.3% of people have drowned in pools. Wow. It was also reported that 25.9% of people were reported to have drowned in lakes. 27.2% of people were have, been, have been reported to drown in rivers. And 10.4% of people have been reported to have drowned in oceans. Let that marinate. Okay. Because isn't it amazing to know, New Galilee, that even though you may be in the most trying and difficult season and time in your life, where it seems like water has risen up to your neck, that you are still living through what other people die in. You, you, you are barely holding on to what it is you have left in your life but what's crazy is that you know more than anybody else that with all the hell you've had to face in your life, you should have been dead by now. And with all the stuff that you had to encounter and the stress that you've been facing and the games that the devil has been continuously playing in your space, it should have been enough to kill you a long time ago, amen? But, but for my real worshipers in the room this morning at New Galilee, you know that there was somebody in your corner that has been carrying you and he said, even if I don't stop the storm, when you think I should stop the storm, I'm going to keep your head from going below the water. Even if I don't silence the tide, when you think I should silence the tide, I'm going to give you what it takes to persevere through some dark, desolate, and some difficult times because you must have forgotten my Isaiah 54 promise that says no 
no weapon that's strong against you shall be able to prosper. There's no storm that kill other people will be able to take my promise away from you. Somebody here in the sanctuary ought to be praising God this morning that although you've been in a storm and sorrows like sea billows have been rolling, it has been nothing but the divine and the undefeated hand of God that has kept you from dying when you know you should have been dead. Amen. I should have lost my mind. I should have had a heart attack and I should have had a brain aneurysm. I should have overdosed on those pills. I should have cut my wrist when they were attacking me. I should have drank myself to the grave. Those kids should have driven me crazy and given me a nervous breakdown. That job should have caused me to check myself into a mental hospital. But it was the hand of God that's keeping me in the stuff that other people drowned in. I wish I had some grateful people in the house this morning that would give God some praise because he's keeping you in the midst of the storm. Because other people died in their situation. But he said, no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper. He never said that the weapons would not form, but he said that the weapons would not prosper. So that means that every hater that tries to plot against you it will not prosper. And every person that tries to block you from your destiny it will not prosper. Because he said, I'm not going to let you drown. Tell your neighbor, it won't work. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That God will, in fact, keep you in the midst of your storm. It takes place in Matthew chapter 14. This, friends, is where the disciples, where they all got on the boat. And Jesus, you know the story, he had gone off to pray. He was on the mountainside praying. And by the time he came down to meet up with the disciples, the Bible vividly shares with us that it was late at night. The Bible also tells us that when he came down from the mountainside to meet them, that the boat was considerably far off in the water because winds and waves had knocked their boat off of the land and into an abundance of water. And that is undoubtedly a moment of pause and consideration because the question, you got me, that, that lingers in the atmosphere that both you and the disciples are currently asking is what happens when you can feel the presence of God when all seems to be going well, but when dark and desolate times and storms arise, it seems like he's nowhere to be found. What happens, church, when you are drowning mentally and being pulled from every direction of life, but nobody is investing in your gift when you need a word of affirmation and encouragement? There are some people that God wants to talk to today who feel like my darkest times arise and, and when I'm thrown into the water, I don't feel the presence of God. There are some people in the sanctuary, as well-dressed as they are, who are asking, where is God when I'm struggling with my self-esteem? Where is God when I'm trying to kick this lingering addiction? Where is God when poverty lingers over my household? Where is God when I continuously uh, have insecurities about my self-esteem? Where is God when that abusive man keeps putting his hands on me? Where is God when I keep calling his name to get me through school? Where is God when I wake up every morning and I have no joy? We ask this question. And so the disciples are far off and, and they see what looks like a ghost walking toward their boat. And watch this, the, 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 or the, while they're on the water, uh, but they don't realize that there's a figure who's walking toward them. They don't realize it, and, and they didn't know that it was Jesus who was walking on the water. Amen? Uh, uh, and, and, and I don't know if you remember the saying, but but it was late at night, amen? And, and, and Reverend Brown, you knew my grandmother very well, and she used to say uh, a saying that may be familiar to each of you. She used to say, late in the midnight hour. 
when, when everything seems to be dark and, and late in the midnight hour, when, when it seems like nobody can save you. She used to say late in the midnight hour, when it seems like your ways just won't come to an end. And late in the midnight hour, when it seems like cancer is overwhelming your body. And late in the midnight hour, when people uh, are seem to abandon you and ostracize you. And late in the midnight hour, when you're just trying to go to work and do your job and people keep picking on you. And late in the midnight hour, when it seems like everybody around you is succeeding and you are stuck in this desolate pit. Late in the midnight hour, I need some people to know that God is going to show up and he's going to turn everything in your life around. The disciples were far off and they were on the water in a boat. And the Bible tells us that it was late at night and Jesus began to walk in their direction. I need somebody in the sanctuary to know that God is about to walk in your direction in the darkest and desolate times of your life. There are some people who feel like I'm alone. I don't know where to turn. I don't know what's happening in this next phase of my life. And it seems like there is not an inkling of light. But God said, because you mustered up enough strength to put your clothes on and make your way to church, it may be dark right now. But late in the midnight hour, I'm about to turn some stuff around. And the stuff that you've been crying about, the stuff that you've been praying about, the stuff that's kept you frustrated, the stuff that's kept you up, the stuff that caused you to have a depression, God is coming in the late night hour. And everything that has tried to shackle you and keep you bound, He said, I'm turning it around in the midnight hour. Jesus on the, in, in, during a late night, amen? Yes. amen? Walking on the water in the midst of their storm. Yes. But if you know the story, you know it was only Peter yes, uh, who was bold enough to ask him to come out and walk with him. Yes. 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 So Jesus gave him permission, and so he steps out in the midst of the storm and yes. begins to walk toward Jesus, amen? amen. Uh, and, and there are some people in New Galilee, I want you to pay attention, who regretfully and shamefully don't know how to trust God for the impossible Amen. in the midst of their storm. Amen. He said you have not simply because you ask not. And the reason why some of us have not received a miracle from God yet is because we have neglected to open up our mouths and ask for what it is we need. Amen. But God said today I'm looking for some people who carry the same spirit and who carry the same anointing like Peter did. Who don't mind asking me for some impossible stuff in the storm because you know that I have all power and all authority in my hands. Amen. I'm just, I, I, I've never been to New Galilee before, but I just want to know, is there anybody in the house this morning that can muster up enough strength and open up your mouth this morning and ask God for something while like this that is impossible? Amen. I know I don't have the money, but if you could just get me to school, I promise you I will give you glory. I know I don't I have any background in this specific area, but if you can just get my foot in the door, I can promise you that they're going to give me the job. I know I don't have the money for the health insurance, but if you can heal my body, I promise you that I will let everybody know who did it. I'm looking this morning for some impossible people who know that God can move your stories. I'm looking for some people who don't mind opening up your mind and say, God, it may look impossible in the natural realm, God, but I believe you for something. In the spiritual realm, God, I believe you for what eyes have not seen, for what ears have not heard. I believe you, God, to be a miracle worker. I believe you, God, to be an earth shaker. I believe you, God, to be a world changer. And I'm going to give you glory not for the tangible stuff, but I'm going to give you glory for some impossible stuff. Because I know that when the praises go up, the impossible comes down. I wish somebody in this reality would give God glory this morning. Just 
our introduction. Let's go into that. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 40. Verse 35 says, That day when the evening came, he said to his disciples, Jesus did, Let us go over to the other side. Now, natural people won't understand it, but spiritual people understand that that is prophetic. That every person who came in the sanctuary this morning, Jesus wants you to know personally that you are getting ready to go to the other side. I got to go from the other side of poverty. You're about to go from the other side from depression. You're about to go to the other side from unhealthy habits. You're about to go to the other side from illegal soul ties. You're about to go to the other side from people who try to block you from your destiny. You're about to go to the other side from living a life of mediocrity. You are about to go to the other side from just having a GED. You're about to go to the other side from just sitting in the back of now you're about to be in the front. Because Jesus said that the last shall one day be first and the first shall one day be last. So now it's your time to be first. It's your time to go to the front of the line. He said, let's go to the other side. Now again, churchy people and religious people won't shout over it. But if you know that God is about to take you to the other side of everything that you've been praying about, why don't you just take 30 seconds and give him praise that you know God, you just answer my prayer, and you just answer everything that I've been asking you about. That in this season of my life, I'm about to go to the other side, but before I get there, I'm going to shout about it, I'm going to dance about it, just as he was in the boat. Now this is a youth service, so now let's talk to young people. Verse 36 says, leaving the crowd behind. The reason why so many young people cannot step into their destiny is because we don't know how to leave the crowd behind. You cannot expect God to fully give you all that he has to offer if you do not change your circle of friends. The crazy thing about the devil is that he will never put people in your life who you don't intentionally like. But he will sometimes put the best kind of people in your life from a carnal ex uh, uh, perspective. Who will, from an external perspective, think, make you think that they are special and who will make you think that they're in your corner. But they are simply serpents who desire to keep you bound. Amen? So you have to change your crowd of friends if you want God to give you all that he has to offer. Right, Jesus had 12 disciples and he couldn't even trust all of them. You got 27 friends and you think everybody's loyal. But you got to understand that in this next season of your life, if you want to experience elevation, you have to also go through separation. You cannot expect God, you cannot expect God to give you what you what he has to offer you because there are some people who are going to continue to pull on your gift and they're not pushing you into your destiny. So you have to then make up in your mind that if I want to get to the next level in life, then I got to let some people from this old season go behind me. Uh, uh, there, there was something about, there was a woman in the Bible, it was Lot's wife. And, and, and God said, God told me, he said, don't look back. Because if you look back, you're going to turn into a pillar of salt. But it was wife, it was Lot's wife who decided to look back. And she turned into a pillar of salt. You got to understand that you're going to continue to be sorry, messing with people that's not pushing you into your destiny. <laughs> Now, along with 
first and within 30, verse 36, the Bible tells us that there were also other boats rubber ground with them. It tells us that there were other other boats with them. But 30, verse 37 says, when the squall came up, it only attacked the boat that Jesus was sleeping in. You are asking yourself, God, why do I continue to face the situation and the problems that I face when it seems like the people that surround me don't face any of those issues? Well, Jesus wanted me to tell you today that the reason why they don't face what you face is because they don't carry what you carry. Some people will never understand why it is that you go through problems and situations and you face many, many storms and you still have not drowned. But the reason why you are facing the storms but have not yet drowned is because you carry what other people don't carry. That's why when people turn their backs on you, you're going to hurt for a little bit, but you're still going to keep it pushing. That's why when people try to conspire against you, you're not bothered because you know that no weapon that's going to get you shall prosper. So it may hurt for a little while that people are continuously succeeding and you are stuck in this place where it seems like you're drowning, but he says don't worry about it because the bigger the storm, the bigger the blessing, and they will not ever be able to be as happy as you are because when I bless you, I'm going to bless you to the point where the same people who thought you were going to be stuck there now got to watch you in a better and bigger place and they're going to watch you worship God because they know when I was stuck in this place, it was nothing but Jesus who I worshiped and prayed and he pulled me out of the mess that I was in. strength to get to the house of God this morning. That's right. Jesus saw you. He has seen your obedience. Right. And he's seen your sacrifice. Right. And so now he's about to get up from where he is. And he's about to come specifically to you. And he's about to speak to your ways that have been trying to kill you and block you from your destiny. Now, now, this isn't for everybody, but I just need about five people to rock with me right here, Brother Webb. Uh, I need somebody to know that you are getting ready to step into a new season of your life only because Jesus is about to open up his mouth on your behalf. Now, 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 Jesus only opened up his mouth in, in verse 39, amen, because th verse 38 says that the disciples went and they opened up their eyes, amen. So I, I, I really want to know, I really want to know, New Galilee, are you willing to look beyond the people that you're sitting next to and look beyond the people who are judging you because you're desperate enough to have Jesus come right in your row and right in your area and he is able to speak to your ways? I wish I had somebody who didn't mind opening up your mouth and saying, God, I need you to speak to my way. I need you to speak to my problem. I need you to speak to my issue. I need you to speak to my storm. I need you to speak to everything that's been trying to kill me. I need you to speak to everything that's been trying to block me. I need you to speak to everything that's been trying to hinder me. I need you to speak to everything that's kept my back up against the wall. I need you to speak to every single solitary thing that's been trying to kill me, God. I need you to speak to fake friends who have been trying to keep me bound, God. Boss God, who won't let me get my well-deserved promotion. I need you to speak to the students in school who keep trying to bully me, God. I need you to speak to my significant other and let them know that I'm the prize. I need you to speak to every area of my life and I need you to calm the storm until everything begins to quiet down. But the more the storm begins to quiet, the more I begin to get louder. So I wish somebody would get louder in the sexual world. 
but the, but the 12 were just men. And so if somebody didn't have faith, it was going to be a very short ride. And so I'm asking if you don't want to drown, and you need God to speak to some areas in your life, would you please come? Would you please come?
Lord, that you continue to be that footprint in the sand for us now. That you carry us through some of the most desolate problems and situations in our lives. And so, God, we pray those who came, for those who came to the altar and those who decided not to, that you would touch each and every person, God. Lord, that you would speak to their storms, that you would speak to their issues, and that you would shout, quiet and be still, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, Lord, in this next season, that no death will come to their family. I pray, God, that you will cancel funerals. I pray, God, that you will give them, God, promotions. I pray, God, that you will shrink tumors. I pray, God, that you will birth visions, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that every person in this sanctuary, God, will not drown, but they shall live and not die. In the name of Jesus, God. I pray, God, that this faith that we now, God, that we now possess will be faith that will keep us through the week until we come back to the house of the Lord and we, and we receive a fresh word, God. God, when people try to provoke us, irritate us, agitate us, antagonize us, I pray, God, that you would allow us to remember, Lord, that you keep us in the midst of our storms. And that, God, when our enemies try to rise, God, that you would allow them to fall. God, please don't remove our enemies, God, because we want them to see, God, how you elevate us. That the hand of God can always pull you out. God, I speak against everything, God, that the enemy tries to do to stop us. And I pray that, Lord, before every person in the sanctuary takes his or her last breath, that they will step into their destiny. And that they, God, will see the fruits of their labor. I pray, God, for every parent, Lord, who came here on behalf of their child today, whose child decided to stay home, God. Lord, that the same spirit that, is, that permeates throughout, God, the spirit of their parents, that when they walk into their household, God, will boomerang and fall on their children. I pray for every child in the sanctuary, God, that you will protect them, Lord, in a racist country, God. I pray, that, Lord, that you will protect them from crazy gunmen, Lord. I pray, God, that you will protect our young women from predators, Lord. I pray that you protect our young men from drug dealers, God, and people who want to pull them from their destiny. In the name of Jesus, God. Change their circle of friends, Lord. Don't allow any of us to drown, God, by the hand of other people who do not want to see us succeed, God. God, you are a promise keeper. You said that the plans that you have for us are not to harm us, God but to allow us to prosper and to give us hope in the future, God. Allow our future to start today, God. You shall not die, but you shall live. God, I pray for every person that's going through a struggle, God, and they have the nature of the patriarch of their family. And they don't have anybody to call on when they're going through because everybody's pulling on them. Don't let them drown, God. But give them new strength and new power to continue to persevere through some, uh, some strenuous situations. God, we thank you, Lord. Allow a new, refreshed spirit to fall on each and every one of us. And we'll be mindful to give you glory, honor, and praise. If you know that God is a promise keeper and he can keep you from drowning, would you just embrace about five people in the sanctuary and tell them you won't drown, you won't drown.